So, what kind of fishing pole you got there? Ah, uh, this is an arrow. You catch many fish on that thing? No, but I catch a lot of birds. You catch a lot of birds, huh? Yep. Where are we at here? Tell me about this place. Bennett Springs State Park, southwest Missouri, south central Missouri, somewhere in Missouri. What city is that near? Lebanon. And fishing is the mission, I gather? You know, fishing, chasing birds, just hanging out. Tell me a little bit about that arrow. This arrow is a dual band Yagi, specifically used for chasing satellites. Does it work? It works extremely well. And what kind of uh, birds do you hope to expect to get on there today? Well, hopefully SO50 and AO51 and maybe, if we're lucky, AO27. Okay. You having fun? No, I'm having a blast. Okay. So, okay, we're speaking to Eddie, KY0F, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the HT that he uses for FM satellites. The radio of choice, pretty much for this activity, is the old Yaesu FT60. It's a dual band radio, will also work split band quite easily. Uh, it's rugged, small, easy to operate, easy to program on it. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive and they're still in production. You can get these for oh, about $175, $180 now. The uh, split programming on them, we tend to tell people to get the uh, computer software to do it. You can do it by hand. In fact, the Clint Bradford site, he has a whole page on how to manually program these. My take on it is that you can hand program the split on them if you can stand the noise. The noise being the sound of your own voice screaming hysterically. The radio has just enough computer in it to think it's smarter than you are. So every time you put it in, it looks at it, looks at that split band that you did and went, oh, you couldn't possibly have meant that. Let me fix it for you. So you punch it in again and it goes, all right, but wait, let me fix that for you. It's much easier to, to program them using the computer software. Uh, we also use the, uh, the little adapters on them to adapt them to the BNC adapter. This is to protect the, uh, the SMA connector on the, the top of the FT60s. Actually the weakest part of a, uh, a handy talkie is accidentally snapping the uh, antenna connector out of them. But you can put the BNC adapter that has the little rubber collar in it, and it's much better protected from it. What kind of antenna do you have hooked up to that radio now? This is a standard Arrow 2. It's uh, a 3 element Yagi in 2 meter and a 7 element in 70 centimeter. So, and they're uh, have their tuners on them. It has a built-in diplexer in the handle <clears throat> so that you can run a single radio connection to the, the two antennas. They're fairly lightweight, easy to use, easy to point, and you can change polarization on demand any way you want to with them. And this is directional Yagi, correct? It is it is very directional, yes. All right, you're going to shoot at the, the satellite with the tip of it here. And what other type of antenna do we have here? Well, we also have one here with the, the smiley antenna. This is, a, this is a real good antenna just for walkie-talkies as well as for satellites because <clears throat> it is spring-loaded to protect the antenna and it extends so that you have a, a extremely long vertical on it. Typically with this you would turn the thing over put your finger on the, the push to talk button and point at the satellite. And by pointing at the satellite, you're going to be at a right angle to it all the way across as it comes up, up and over. And that'll give you your best reception on a, on a handheld antenna. That's outstanding. Let's go work a satellite. <laughs> all right.
Echo Mike zero zero is Kilo Delta zero. Hotel Kilo Delta Echo Mike thirty eight. Bennett Springs State Park. November 8, Romeo Oscars, KD0, HKD, thank you. Echo Mike 7 0 is Kilo Delta 0, Hotel Kilo Delta, Echo Mike 38, Bennett Springs State Park. Echo Mike 7 0. Alpha Charlie, come back again. Uh, and we are up and running. Okay. Hi, I'm Randy, KD0HKD. We're going to talk a little bit about satellite today and uh, how to uh, actually work with satellites, how to call them. I'm using a Yesu FT60R HD radio. Uh, it's uh, very good for this. We'll talk in a, another area of our uh, overall presentation more about the radio. Uh, I'm using the uh, Arrow 2 LEO low earth orbit antenna. This is kind of the bread and butter uh, antenna for satellite. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to get on the air and what you're going to say when you get up there. Uh, you want to use your uh, call sign phonetically. Uh, I will usually say it for myself, Kilo Delta Zero, Hotel Kilowatt Delta, and uh, give your grid square phonetically. Uh, we're at Bennett Spring State Park here in uh, Lebanon, Missouri, beautiful place to be. And the grid square here is EM37, so we're going to give that out as Echo Mike 37. So generally speaking, when a satellite comes over, you're going to want to point your antenna at the satellite. You want to possibly change it for polarization until it's good. Make sure you got a good signal received. If you can't hear it, they probably can't hear you. Then you want to call out Kilo Delta Zero, Hotel Kilowatt Delta, Echo Mike 37, Handheld Missouri. By saying handheld, they don't have to yield, but if they're considered amateur radio operators, they will. They'll kind of give you a little bit of leeway because, after all, you're only working with five watts. That's kind of helpful. Another way to do it is if you hear someone else out there and you want to get his attention, you might hear KY0F. So you might call out to him, Kilo Yankee Zero Foxtrot. This is Kilo Delta Zero, Hotel Kilowatt Delta, Echo Mike 37. Or perhaps you hear someone in Echo Mike 38 and you want to say, hey, Echo Mike 38 station, this is Kilo Delta Zero, Hotel Kilowatt Delta. The idea is to make contacts and be acknowledged really not going to be a whole lot of room for conversation out there. It's an awful lot like contesting. There are some times of the day when there's not as many people out there working where you can actually work it like it is a conversation or a rag chew. And that's kind of fun too, but most of your run-of-the-mill communications is going to be real short, make contact, get acknowledged, and move on to the next guy. One thing very important, it's very bad form to get onto a satellite contact and start hollering, CQ, CQ, CQ. We've heard times when someone will do that for two or three minutes. You're talking to a satellite that's only overhead for maybe 12 minutes, and you just ate up a good portion of airtime by hollering CQ. It'll really upset a lot of the other hams, so you don't want to do that. But generally speaking, if you get out there and call your call sign out, they hear you, you will be acknowledged, and you'll have fun. We'll hear you on the air. Hang on, i got to zoom out. So how many you got there? Four? That's not shitty, Jeremy. Good job. Yeah. Well, so I think we're going to have good dinner tonight, huh? Yep. All right. Outstanding. <laughs>